Hi, this is Dr. Rob Rosberg from the Hospital for Special Surgery. I'm going to discuss with you today total hip replacement for arthritis, deformity, and associated leg length discrepancy. Before surgery, Leah had advanced arthritis of the um, right hip and pain, and the leg length discrepancy was perceived to be six centimeters. It was mostly from pelvic tilt and shortening. If you notice on the long x-ray, you can see how the pelvis is quite tilted and it creates a large perceived leg length discrepancy. It's associated with the deformity and the contracture of the hip. Notice the left hip is normal with an acetabulum, ball and socket, and you see the difference between the, that and the right hip, which has a collapsed head and an associated adduction contracture. This schematic diagram helps illustrate the um, shortening coming from both the actual shortening of the leg, but also in large part due to the tilt of the pelvis. After total hip replacement, her leg lengths were equal and the patient perceived a six centimeter lengthening. You'll notice on the long x-ray, the pelvis is level and a full six centimeters of lengthening has been achieved. This is before and this is after. There was a gain of six centimeters. Now understand that the sciatic nerve has not been stretched six centimeters because it's not a true lengthening and stretching of the nerve, rather a unlocking of the pelvis that allows for the apparent lengthening of the leg. And so no additional lengthening surgery was necessary other than the hip replacement. Before total hip replacement, after total hip replacement. I'd like to show you another case to illustrate this concept. Kevin, before surgery, had advanced arthritis and a perceived leg length discrepancy of 8 centimeters. Notice the tilt of the pelvis on the long x-ray. Before surgery, he had advanced arthritis, pain, erosion of the femoral head, and pelvic obliquity. After total hip replacement, you can see that he has gained a substantial amount of length with the hip replacement. After total hip replacement, there was removal of the arthritis and insertion of the prosthesis, and it allowed unlocking of the hip and mobilization of the hip. You'll notice the difference between before and after and a large uh, perceived lengthening of the leg before and after. Again, the hip replacement allowed unlocking of the pelvis and mobilization of the hip and allowed what the patient perceived to be a large lengthening without actually stretching the sciatic nerve. I'd like to show you another example that's a little bit different. Now here, Nicole had a leg length discrepancy of 43 millimeters with a painful, unstable left hip from neonatal hip sepsis. This is her standing with the uh, blocks. In this case, there's not much contracture, but part of the uh, shortening is from the proximal migration of the hip, and part of the shortening is from the actual shortening of the leg. Now, after hip replacement, we were able to achieve part of the lengthening and an analysis after that shows that there's a residual leg length discrepancy of 25 millimeters. The amount of lengthening achieved uh, during hip replacement is constrained by the soft tissue envelope and the sciatic nerve. It's difficult to predict the exact amount of lengthening to be gained with total hip replacement. Um, one can only do it in a safe manner by not overstretching the nerve. But the concept here is that we can um, lengthen the leg and treat the residual leg length discrepancy with a retrograde precise femur nail inserted from the distal aspect of the femur. Uh, this allows gradual lengthening of the bone and until the leg lengths are equal. And here you can see that the um, uh, femur healing progressed nicely and um, the bone is fully healed. I'd like to show you one other example 
of, uh, an ex of where we treated leg length discrepancy and arthritis with a combination of hip replacement and um, bone lengthening. Kathy had a dysplastic hip and a leg length discrepancy of 6 centimeters. After the total hip replacement, we were able to gain 3.5 centimeters. Again, we were constrained by the soft tissue envelope and the sciatic nerve. <coughs> 3.5 centimeters was achieved in a safe manner. But there was a residual leg length discrepancy of 2.5 centimeters. Now, before the hip replacement and after the hip replacement. And I want to show you the timeline and how we approach this. <clears throat> Before surgery, you can see she has 6 centimeters of leg length discrepancy. After the total hip replacement, the discrepancy has been decreased to 2.5 centimeters. And after a lengthening of the tibia, she has full equalization of her leg lengths. So the strategy here was after total hip replacement, the residual discrepancy was treated by lengthening the tibia with a precise nail to equalize her leg lengths. The patient uh, gave permission to show her images uh, as seen here. Uh, if you're a professional and you're interested in learning more about uh, this subject area, uh, there are cases uh, illustrated in the adult reconstruction section of our case atlas. I thank you for your attention.